The blessings of God did not start with Calvary or with an empty tomb. They began with creation. And then with the birth of Christ, a new creation. <clears throat> the baptism of Jesus by John is traditionally an extension of the joy of epiphany that marks the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry. A moment when Jesus begins to open the new creation to all the world. So how do we respond to this? For centuries we've so wrapped up the kingdom of God in the church that we don't allow this amazing gift to have some impact on our daily lives. But this event is not just some milestone like a baby's first teeth or the first steps. It's an event that's an invitation from God to each of us to allow our lives to become the ground through which this blessing of the new creation spreads out into the world. So listen and open our hearts. Our reading this morning is taken from Isaiah 43, chapter 1 to 7. Isaiah 43, 1 to 7. Let us hear the words of God. But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, who, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have, called you by, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored and I, loved, I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed and made the word of the, the, word of the Lord. Please, you may rise if you're able for the gospel reading. from Luke 3, from 15 to 17, and 21 to 22. Let us hear the words of God. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the tongue of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is the in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. By the chaffs he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized, and he was praying, the heavens opened up, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved, 
with whom I am pleased, the word of God for the people of God. As I, Ishmael has read for us this morning, Isaiah announces the one who created us has called us by name, claimed us for divine life. He promises that no matter what earthly catastrophe befalls us, our identity as divine children of God will be preserved. We are precious in God's sight and honored and loved. What could be more like an awesomely loving parent than this embrace of God? This gift is offered to everyone who is called by God's holy name. Indeed, everyone who seeks this childhood in the new creation. The gateway to this adoption as beloved children of God is baptism. Friends, God is doing something in and through our baptism. We are being sealed as beloved as the children of God, the sisters and brothers of Christ Jesus. The very place where God is bringing to flower a new creation, we are transformed in baptism. Of course, we baptize infants, and in so doing, God welcomes them into the church, the family of God. And then, when they confirm or we reaffirm our faith later, we're fully claiming that eternal grace of baptism for ourselves as loving children of God forever. But God's Spirit has already begun in our baptism. Indeed, before we are even baptized, God is drawing all people in the world into this embrace of divine love. The words of the Divine Father at Jesus' baptism are an affirmation of the promises made in Isaiah. You are my child, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. God the Father is expressing that eternal bond of complete and perfect love that overflows in joy and happiness. And this is what God gives to each one of us in our baptism and daily as divine children of God. So much for the heavy stuff. Do you experience that? Do you experience being a beloved child of God? Do you experience the deep love that God has for you? Some of us had parents who, who kind of told us that they loved us and, and cherished us. And others, well, you know, our parents didn't say that, but they showed it. And some of us had parents who couldn't do either. And maybe we never quite got it into our heads that we are beloved children of God. That God cares about us uniquely and with love and forgiveness and grace. So many are consumed with self-doubt and Loathe, self-loathing and hatred and dismay and resignation to isolation, hopelessness or worse. We're all too aware of our failings and usually there are plenty of people and systems who are happy to remind us of that. Have you noticed even as we frenetically struggle for happiness and joy by consuming stuff and experiences that that sense of judgment never seems to leave? And yet, God loves us and cherishes us. Each and every one is valuable to God. No one is a mistake. 
Now, a lot of us come from big families, and you know, there was a child born many years late, right, Bill? <laughs> Bill was not a mistake. All right? Every child is a beloved child of God, whether we come early or late. Every one of us is a beloved child of God, whether our parents, earthly parents, loved us and cared for us or not. Every one of us is valuable to God. And too often we live as orphans in the universe. We don't experience ourselves as beloved children of God. We live in the death of lonely wanderers in the dark and benighted cosmos struggling to survive against the odds, using our wits, our merit, our skills, our sheer dumb luck and the vicissitudes of privilege and prejudice that cloud the world. But the church exists not to prop up privilege and maintain prejudice, not to judge people, not to make a class of the insiders and the outsiders. It exists because God in Christ Jesus has named us beloved and cherished and precious children of the Most High. And together we reflect to one another and those around us this amazing love and grace. Some of you may be old enough to have been in those dance halls where they have that ball in the middle with the little mirror things and you know it makes sparkles on the wall and and it makes the place special. I'm sure that kids today don't do that but I remember going to a town that all the roads into it were dirt and there was a town hall where we went square dancing and listened to the caller who had loose dentures. But there was a ball turning in the middle, hanging uh, with a light bulb nearby, and it, it kind of had magic to it. And a lot of times our churches are like that dance hall. They there may be just a bunch of dirt roads leading there. There may not be a lot of people there. But when the music starts, the light starts to reflect. And we start to experience the beauty of one another, the inner light of Christ that burns within us. The fact that each person there, no matter how they look on the surface, is a beloved child of God. And no matter how ornery that person is during the week, at least for a few moments, we have a sense that God is at work in each one of us and that that love is radiating around in that space. This, my friends, is the joy of being called children of God. And we can take that from here as we go into the world where that reflection seems to get lost. Where people do not know about it. Where divine love is stuffed in a basket, put away in the attic after Christmas. When we allow God to renew us in our baptismal joy, we can experience this new creation taking place in our midst and in our lives and we can take a moment then every day, and perhaps more, to be thankful and celebrate this place in our life and in the church. We can return to the fountain of true life. And this water business, we're going to, although your bulletin doesn't say it, we're going to celebrate a renewal of our baptisms a little later in the service today. And you're apt to get a little damp especially Brian. And uh, as we use water, 80% of our bodies, I think it's more than that, isn't it? Made up of water, the rest is just dirt, right? <laughs> yeah. 
We're made up of water, and every day we need water to consume in order to be alive. Water is what does it for all creation. And in that water, Jesus comes to that water and brings the new creation to the very source of creation, right? In, in the Genesis story, it is the Spirit of God that brooded over the waters, the cosmic waters. I'm not sure if it was H2O or not, but the idea that out of the waters we come and, and God then comes into it to re-bless it. And with this water then, God's Spirit comes and touches each one of us to bind us to this new creation in which we are restored to this love in God. This love that was never taken away because we were naughty or bad. It was always there. But we've forgotten. And we wandered. And God came after us. And through the Spirit reaches out to us and brings us back to bless us again and again with this divine love. You see, the seeds of divine love are nourished by the water of creation and animated to life by the divine Spirit. This is the vision of life that Jesus saw and embodied and proclaimed the Spirit enables us to embrace this vision, to make it our own, to let it fill our lives so that our very existence proclaims the glory of God in a new creation. Now, friends, we can keep building, and of course, as Methodists, as committee meetings, right, we can collect money, we can spend money, we can have carpets and lights and organs, and all this will not prevail if we do not fill with a sense that we are beloved by God. And if we do not share that with one another and with all that we come in contact. Do not be faint of heart, my friends. Take up the love that God has given for you. Share it. Share it. You never know whose life will be changed by love. But God does. And no amount of survivalism or tribalism in our culture is going to give us what we need. Only by allowing the Spirit to animate this love within us. As the kingdom of God, the new creation, become available. And so as we celebrate the renewal of our baptism today, I invite you to embrace that. Amen.